Hello friends, I am Satish Arparyani, Assistant Professor working in Mechanical Department, Walchand Institute of Technology, Sholapur. Today we are discussing on the topic called Shell Moulding. At the end of this session, students will be able to understand Shell Moulding, its advantages and what are the limitations. Also, we will touch over the application part. The content which sequence we will follow is First, we'll discuss about the shell molding. Then, we'll discuss in depth about the procedure of what is involved in the shell molding. Next, we'll discuss the advantages and limitations involved in shell molding process. And finally, we'll discuss the topic called applications of the shell molding. First, what do we mean by shell molding? The shell molding, this process was invented by Dr. Kroning in Germany. Hence, is also called as Kroning process. It is a process in which sand mixed with thermosetting resin i repeat this sand is mixed with thermosetting resin is allowed to come in contact with heated metallic pattern so here the metallic pattern is heated and sand with thermosetting resin is used which forms a thin and strong shell of the mold is formed around the pattern then shell is removed from the pattern and cope and drag are removed together and kept in a flask with necessary backup material. After that, molten metal is poured in the mold. In short, we have discussed what do you mean by shell molding. Now we will go through the process of involved in shell molding. Here the metal is heated up to 175 to 350 degrees centigrade depending upon the what are the constraints, what is the size, what are the, uh, the design parameters involved in that part so 175 to 350 is the range generally used which is clamped over the box containing sand mix with thermo setting resin such as the thermo setting resin such as phenol formaldehyde ura formaldehyde or polysters the box and the pattern are inverted for the short time the mixture when it comes in contact with the hot pattern it causes an initial set as the as, as the thermosetting resin, resin is used and builds up a coherent sand shell next to the pattern the thickness of the shell is about 6 mm to 18 mm and is dependent on pattern temperature and sand mixture this takes only 5 to 20 seconds then box and pattern are brought in its original position the shell of the resin bonded sand is retained on the pattern surface while unaffected sand falls into the box the shell still on the pattern is cured by heating it in an oven from 250 degree centigrade to 350 degree centigrade for about one to three minutes the assembly from the oven and the shell is stripped from the pattern by ejector pins in order to obtain the clean stripping a silicon parting agent may be sprayed or the on the pattern the shell halves are assembled with the help of clamps and backing material as the as as the name itself suggests shell which is very the thickness is very thin so during when we start clamping it uh, we may have the uh, chances that it can break it so backing material first is provided very clearly in that shell now after that backing material the shell which are assembled now with that shell, once the shell are assembled the shell molding is ready for pouring now we'll go through the diagram so we see here this is the hot pattern right these are the hot pattern and this is the cell sand here and this is which is called as dumping box this is our handles which are used in that this is the step one which is called sand mixer in the box here mixer is there this pattern is now heated now in the step, step two sand resin mixture dumped over the heated pattern this is inverted you see you see inverted now what will happen this is the heated pattern here after heating the pattern is there so here now the resin which is thermosetting resin it comes in contact with the heated pattern simple process very now coming to the third part again it is brought to the same position as in the step one now you'll see the green layer what we can see here it is called shell which is formed it is very thinner so see 
this this is the thin thin part because it was heated pattern thermosetting resin was used and what which the sand is not used again it comes back to the box this is called unused sand which can be used for in further process now this after sand this fourth step with the help of ejector pins see ejector pins this is being removed now as we can see there is chances if ejector pins are applied with some forces the chances that this thin can have not a clear surface so some agent can be applied so that the line where it is being parted off be very clean or to some extent in good condition we can say now after this this in similar way this first half and second half are joined together here we can see now this these are this is the flask this is the clamp we can see these are filler materials which are being used and these are in shape and now this these are called shell now this shell melding is very much ready for pouring so we can pour and this kind of shape what we'll get get as a part so what we have to understand very simple process a heated pattern is there these is that these are the thermosetting resin with sand mixture once it is inverted a thin shell is formed the new sand comes back up then with the help of ejector pins these are been removed first half second half are assembled with the help of clamps and then it is almost ready for pouring now coming after seeing the what are the advan seeing the procedure now we'll go through what are the advantages involved in shell molding first and foremost big advantage which is involved in shell molding is dimensional accuracy the process has an ability to produce casting to tight dimensional tolerances hence machining allowance can be reduced which ultimately helps in reduction of fettling and finishing cost see once we'll give if dimensional accuracy is good so we cannot give more allowance what even for what you can say machining allowance or something so the cost finally is if materials we are losing in uh, machining so which is again uh, involves some cost so finally that cost is being Uh, waved off in that case so it is good and then finally costing is also coming less the shell molding process accommodates easily deep drawer patterns with less tapers than conventional production process second hollow cores with the shell molding hollow cores and thin profile molds can be possible the characters involve economics in sand usage and ease of handling hollow cores increase the permeability hence usage of very fine sand is also possible permeability again this the role of permeability is related to what are the uh, what you can say uh, casting defects it is related if the per if the good to good extent if the permeability is not there we can have a good casting defects so this process has an very good advantage that it 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 has good permeability and so fine sands can be easily possible then comes the excellent surface finish shell molding process has the ability to produce casting with excellent surface finish because as we have seen the very thin parts thin surface can be produced and capacity to produce very fine detail sand to metal ratio this is one of the very important factor this is the unique process that gives hollow cores and thin walled molds which results in substantially weight reduction hence material saving the normal sand to metal ratio is 1 ratio 1 which is much lower then other processes longer shelf life when properly stored the shell sands have the indefinite shell life hence these sands can be stored and used as needed in the foundry then coming to the big advantages is ease of handling the molds and the cores made by the shell molding have exceptional resistance to damage during storage and handling they have a very very high resistance to humidity and can be easily stored for a long period so once if these molds and cores made which were made with the help of shell molding have exceptional resistance resistance to damage means they can be stored or handled again and again again it finally it results to less cost we can say and next important advantage is, is resistance to moisture pickup the shell molding has a higher resistance to moisture and can be stored in humid conditions for months together this is again we can see in the upper point handling storing resistance to moisture pickup these are the superb advantages available with this kind of process the resin used in shell molding process is very stable and moisture resistant next come the big advantage is excellent flowability 
the dry coating on the sands give better foliability and blowing ability compared to process based on wet sand mixture this property helps in producing intricate coats and molds which can be blown to greater density coats for the water jacket examples these are lesser pattern wear as most of the patterns are made from the cast iron very little or no wear is observed which results in higher pattern life this helps in producing large number of catterns casting sorry these this helps in producing large number of castings without much difficulty now we have seen there are so many advantages but there are certain disadvantages which are associated with the this process first big disadvantage is high cost of the process the phenolic resins 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 which we use for assembly molding process are very costly the percentage of resin usage is also very high compared to other processes hence this process requires a very tight control over a shell thickness else the competitiveness all of all the process will be sacrificed high tolling cost the shell molding is thermos set in nature thereby requiring higher curing temperature the pattern used are of cast iron with smooth surfaces and a high, very low expansion coefficient so there is tolling cost is high cost of this process itself is high because of phenolic resins use and the percentage of resins use if it is to good greater extent the competition will be totally lost then comes the cycle time compared to the cycle time required for shell mounting is more either box or carbon dioxide process limited casting weight the sh as we see the shell itself the name shell itself as i told in the previous slides also the thickness is very small the shell molding process is best suited for use in small intricate and lightweight casting the process can effectively use for casting weights up to maximum we can say 80 kg reuse of sand is difficult certain casting shapes are unsuitable when properly parting and gating is not available now coming after seeing the disadvantages we'll come to the application parts to some extent we'll see it is well suited for ferrous and both non ferrous alloys casting in the range of 0.1 to 10 kg alloys that can be easily cast by shell molding are aluminum alloys copper alloys cast iron stainless steels component cast by the shell molding are smaller pipes camshaft bushings wall bodies spacers brackets bearing caps shafts and gears automotive rocker arms and walls etc so to some extent what i have shown here the application of shell molding now please think and list the parameters which can affect the quality of the shell molding take some time and please think and list the parameters which affect the quality of shell molding the references are used in this session are from nptel pl jain and wikipedia thank you